Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The province of Saskatchewan announced a COVID-19 cluster that was identified at the Lloydminster Hospital. 13 cases were identified, including five healthcare workers. Lloydminster will not start reopening some businesses on May 4th because of the cluster. The city of Lloydminster addressed this and more in today's COVID update. We're here for the uh, COVID-19 update from the city of Lloydminster. Today is Thursday, April 30, 2020. We have questions today from Primetime Local News and 1061 The GOAT. We will start with Primetime. Uh, question one, what is the city's reaction to the cluster of COVID-19 cases that have been identified in Lloydminster? The city was surprised and concerned to learn of the spread of COVID cases in Lloydminster um, that we learned of yesterday in the Premier's address to the province. Um, First, our thoughts and our prayers go to our healthcare workers working at our hospital, and then that's our doctors and our nurses and support staff as well, our dietary and cleaning. Um, I think it's more important now than ever that the city collectively comes together to fight the virus, and we do that by practicing good social distancing. And to follow up with the first part of that response, uh, question two fits into that. When did the City of Lloydminster first become aware of the number of new cases in the city? Uh, the City of Lloydminster um, became aware of these cases yesterday um, at the same time the rest of the community did. And question three, as a result of the outbreak, uh, Lloydminster can't begin with the reopen plan. Uh, what's the city's reaction on that? And to follow up, what can the city expect, or sorry, when can the city expect to begin phase one of the reopened Saskatchewan plan? So we, we have been following uh, across our whole city the recommendations from our chief medical officer of health in Saskatchewan. Um, we don't know right now what that may look like in terms of the reopening of Lloydminster and following a reopen Saskatchewan but we will be connecting with our Saskatchewan Health and Saskatchewan Health Authority to um, best inform our residents and businesses. And their last question, uh, recently the city has announced the cancellation of summer events, which include Canada Day, Heritage Day, Street Fest, and the Pet Expo. Uh, can you explain what went into that decision? Uh, both of our provinces have mandated limits on public gatherings and the city was facing significant challenges in planning and executing public events, including our Canada Day and Heritage Days. Uh, these challenges are not just felt here in Lloydminster. There have been several large-scale public events across the country that have been had to cancel due to COVID-19, things like our Klondike Days as well as Calgary Stampede. Uh, Cancelling these events is something we indeed uh, grappled with. However, at the end of the day, public safety remains our utmost priority. Considering the recent news, we have still come so far in the battle against COVID-19, and we must continue to protect each other until we overcome this pandemic. And next, a few questions from 1061 The Goat. Uh, question one, with yesterday's announcement of the city reopening being pushed back, um, how will it affect the local economy? So we are working closely with the city's economic development department, um, which has coordinated an economic recovery plan for the city. And there will be continued discussions with local business community to ensure that they have the latest information. Um, they continue to have an open line of communication with businesses to address the COVID-19 impacts on the economy. We encourage all business owners to visit the city's website to learn more about some of the available business resources. And there are also several resources available from the provincial governments, depending on where the business is located, and as well as the federal government. And question two, did the Saskatchewan government give the city more information how, to, how the reopen plan will be implemented after the outbreak is over? So today we are collecting information uh, from our provincial partners on when and where um, the City of Lloydminster's reopen plan will happen and um, we continue to take the recommendations from our Saskatchewan Health. And their last question, will there be stricter enforcement for those who are not following public health guidelines in the city? 
Uh, to our knowledge, there have not been any stricter guidelines put into place. However, as we all can appreciate, this situation is very fluid. These guidelines can change at any moment. I'm very pleased to be joined with Cal Wakeland from Wildside Outdoors. So, Cal, first off, thanks a lot for joining me. Well, cool. thank you very much for having me on. Absolutely. Now, of course, you know, you're a, a local business here in Lloydminster, and like many businesses, they've had to adapt to for their practices because of COVID-19. What, what, what have you guys been doing at Wildside? Well, we uh, do the curbside service, so customers can come to the door. We have a table set up just on the inside of the entrance. So uh, what we do is we allow one customer at a time. They get to the table and then we have to go out around the store and grab whatever they're looking for. This makes it very hard for us because uh, fishing season, everybody wants to grab that rod or grab that reel and check them out. Now we have to actually ask them what they are looking for and then take eight to 10 rods up there or reels. And uh, yeah, it's it's very way different way of doing business. There's no doubt about it. What was your initial reaction when you found out that you guys had to close because of the pandemic? Uh, I actually was in shock. I couldn't believe that we had to do that. Um, I, I understand, of course, we have this epidemic that's happening, and uh, we definitely need to keep it under control. We can't have that outbreak and, and go a little bit crazy. So uh, I understood that part of it. But at the same time, we were looking at this as far as uh, keeping your psych uh, all kind of happy, you know, like uh, people can get out and do fishing and all that kind of stuff and get away from the pressures of sitting and forcing yourself to stay home. You know, Alberta has already gone through so much already and uh, losing their jobs and all that kind of stuff. The stress is already immense and then this hit us. So uh, yeah, we were doing some phone calls right away to see if we could make that change because it is very stressful and it's not just for me, it's for everybody out there. And uh, if they want to get out and get out fishing or hunting or whatever they want to do, that's a stress relief for them. And uh, to keep your insanity or in your mind uh, safe, uh, we just thought it would be a good thing to do to let everybody come in and actually do that. Um, we are keeping the social distancing and all that kind of stuff. We could have also done it, but we were told we couldn't do it. I was on the phone with the city for about an hour and a half. And uh, they told us absolutely no way. So we had to stick with what they said. And now, of course, with Scott Moe announcing that Lloydminster is not part of the Saskatchewan reopen plan as of, you know, on Monday, of course, one of those phases was opening uh, campgrounds facilities in the longer run. How much of a blow, I guess, was that for you knowing that, you know, not only are we not a part of that reopen plan, but also the fact that, you know, the camping season could be, is put on hold longer for people here in Lloydminster. Yes. So originally we heard that Saskatchewan was going to do that. And uh, I was concerned that uh, maybe being that we're a, a border city that we weren't allowed to uh, be a part of that. When the city announced that we could be, uh, I thought it was just great. I mean, that's where we need to get our customers back in the store and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you can imagine the financial stress that we're under right now also. So what happened is that it was just a kind of give me and take away right away. You know, I was all happy about this happening and oh my God, this is going to be a good thing. Then all of a sudden they took it away. So what happens again is that when they take the camping and the fishing and all that out of it, that's my business. That's where we're at. When they uh, take that away, of course, now we can't uh, look at anything coming in phase one. We have to hope that they keep phase two going. But at the same time, since this has started, there's one thing I've learned and nothing's in stone. Everything changes day to day. We never know where we're at. So uh, we just take it and uh, we hope that everybody stays safe. I, uh, I am a little concerned about people uh, or the government's actually opening all this up because of the reason that we don't want to go backwards. We want to go frontwards. And if they open it too quickly, look what can happen. We just had 13 uh, uh, incidences right in our hospital here. And uh, how fast that can just show up overnight kind of thing. You know, uh, we have to watch that kind of stuff too. So again, it's all for it, but against it at the same time, I guess, if you can understand that. Absolutely. Well, um, as well as just really quickly here before we wrap things up, how, how much of a support, how much local support have you had from the community for, for your business during this time? 
absolutely amazing. Uh, I've got so many customers that were concerned that we were going to go under. Of course, uh, small business across Canada is really concerned about that. And uh, so we've had a lot of customers come in and support us in that way, thinking, you know, every little bit that they do will help us stay in business because they don't want to see us go. So again, our customers, our customer base is amazing. We really appreciate it, but it is a lot slower because they can't get into the store. Absolutely. Well, Cal, I really appreciate your time and sharing your insight with us. So thank you very much for joining me and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. Well, I'm very pleased to be joined with a familiar face here in the Lloyd Minster area, but of course he hasn't worked here in a very, very long time. TSN's Brian Mudra joins me right now. Brian, first off, thanks a lot for joining me. No worries, Connor. I'm, I'm glad I'm a familiar face. My parents wouldn't recognize me with this stuff growing on my face right now, but uh, I'm not that old. I remember Lloydminster, the border city. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to start my career there. No doubt, it was awesome. Yeah, we definitely have seen, I've seen definitely a couple of your uh, old tapes there for sure. But uh, we're talking about something a little bit different. Of course, you know, you, like myself, working in the media, of course, have had to make changes due to COVID-19. I guess, what was your initial reaction when you found out that, you know, not only that the NHL season was put on hold, but the fact that, you know, you weren't going to be calling any more games? I think shock, like a lot of people. Um, at the time, I was in Montreal. It was a Tuesday night early in the month, um, and it was Montreal hosting Nashville. And uh, we were winding down the regular season. They were playing again at home versus Buffalo on Thursday. And Wednesday night, my boss happened to be in town. We met up. We don't get to chat a lot. It's cool to see him. And he already had uh, known the news that they were going to suspend the season. So I was like, wow. Um, and on the Friday, we were supposed to fly out for the Habs West Coast Swing to San Jose and Anaheim and Los Angeles. And you'll remember at that time, San Jose was one of the hotspots for COVID-19. And we were kind of chatting amongst ourselves, myself and Mike Johnson and Dave Poulin. Maybe we would call games in an empty arena or arenas. And it was like, whoa, wouldn't that be something? And then to have it just sort of like stop. Um, obviously, the NBA was the uh, first major sport. And then soon after, all the commissioners followed. And Gary Bettman made the announcement the next day. And I was already on a flight uh, back to Toronto. And literally, like everybody else, I've been just sort of uh, lying low ever since and just waiting for news and then after a while it became you know you worry about your career and what's been going on there but then really quick you realize uh what a what a battle that our whole world in and yeah. uh my thoughts went out to frontline workers and uh the hospitals and doctors and friends and family that you know that i have friends that are you know healthcare workers and yeah it's been, it's been a tough go for all of us now, you mentioned the fear of, you know, because there have been talks about the NHL re resuming their season and especially in different cities. Do you believe in your own opinion that the NHL could possibly continue its season later on, maybe into the summertime? I think so. I think if you listen, and I mean, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be an insider, um, but I just listen to guys smarter than I am. And if you listen to our insiders on PSN and people in the know, um, there's a ton of conversations. I mean, it's a, it's a multi-million dollar business, so I think everything is on the table and i think that they are exploring all options whether it's every division will have a host city and one of those rumors is maybe toronto um is the host of the atlantic division who knows right it could go many ways but i think that all parties involved the players the owners uh, are trying to get on board with the health officials in every province in every country obviously there's a border as well that affects the nhl um I think that there are preparations behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, it's got to come down to getting a green light from the health professionals. Absolutely. And now, I guess, what's a, what's a day-to-day in the life for you now? Of course, if we go to your Twitter, of course, you did get a new puppy. So I guess what other things have been going on in your day-to-day -day life, adapting to COVID-19 there? Yeah, um, growing an awful beard. Um, I won't, I think, qualify to be a hair model anytime soon. Um, got a new dog, Pop. So he's been a handful. Um, he uh, He's a pretty good boy most of the time, but uh, he's been fun. You know what? It's been great to get a little guy like that to take your mind off a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. And, you know, instead of watching the news or the latest on the stock market or the latest in what could happen in sport, I'm hoping he took a poop in the right place. So, I mean, it's been a, it's been a lot more fun this week. Uh, I would say 90% of the time he's been a good boy. 
So that's been great. And, you know, trying to get, you know, stay in shape, get a workout in, catch up with family and friends um, is what I've been doing a lot of as well. And just um, just doing my best, doing the best I can. And, and Connor, on a, on a personal note, when I was in Lloydminster, uh, I had a battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of cancer, and I had it twice. And I remember early on thinking, like, if I ever caught a cold or a, or a flu or something, my immune system, uh, I wasn't in good shape, and uh, it was a really serious situation for me. And so when I hear about people that are self-isolating and doing their part right now and from the get-go, um, you know, I give a huge thank you because there's a lot of people that are at risk right now health-wise. Uh, maybe they're cancer patients. Maybe they have a asthma or a bad immunity to whatever condition they may have. So for our doctors and nurses and people that are on the front lines right now, I have a grandfather that's uh, battling cancer. One of my dear friends went to chemotherapy today. Um, so, you know, I, I think about all the nurses and the people on the front lines, and I'm really grateful for all of them. And for any of those that might be watching this, I send a sincere thanks and a shout out because uh, a lot of them have had to not be near their families because they are trying to keep them safe by keeping the rest of us healthy. So I really thank them. Absolutely. And I guess, Brian, just really quickly, lastly, just because I know you used to work here in Lloydminster, if you had to pick one story that you did during your time here, which one was your favorite? Is there a bet? Is there an ongoing bet with Stacey Comer on this? I need to know first before I answer. Uh, there, there's been a few about the square dancing one I think is up there that you, that you did way back when. Is that something you would call your It'll favorite? The square dancing one would probably be a big hit. Uh, the Lashford Library, I think uh, I was all over that. I might have broke that story. Um, and there was some sort of like chain of love story at the local mall that was a hot commodity as well that I did. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but the highlight, though, when I was the weather specialist, which means you know absolutely nothing about the weather, uh, my throat in the studio was no flurries, no worries, but the gun, and then it was back to you in the studio. So that was, uh, that, that actually didn't catch on anywhere, but that was, that was my hot slogan back in the day. Well, I think I'm going to start doing that for, for when I do weather. But, Brian, I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for joining me. My pleasure. Stay safe, daughter. joined today by a past president Todd Lewis. Todd, thank you for taking the time with me today. And now obviously the Saskatchewan government has announced their plan for potential reopening of the province. Just what are your thoughts from a pass's perspective? Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good gradual plan. Uh, you know, it's five phases. Uh, we were, we're talking about phase one and two, uh, really for, uh, our, our industry, um, you know, we've done a very good job of, uh, the, the players in the ag industry of, uh, practicing social distancing. Uh, you know, fortunately, we can do things like, uh, it's not unusual just to go to a machinery dealership and pick up a parts bag outside the dealership. Issues like that, right? Uh, producers have, have always been, you know, using mobile devices to uh, order parts. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's not really a shopping experience. It's just get, just get the right right parts for the right piece of equipment, correct? So, so it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I think we see, uh, it's an opportunity uh, to see improvements. Maybe we'll see some some uh, uh, fewer lineups, those kind of things. But uh, I think overall, uh, yeah, I think there's pretty good satisfaction with the, what the province has done to this point, and uh, you know the rollout of uh, hopefully being able to reopen our economy. And, and I think uh, producers are fairly comfortable with the with the gradual uh, approach because we sure don't want to see you know a second wave and third wave here. You know another spike and and uh, to ruin all the good work we've done to this point. So then really for this, it, it's not really a big difference for farmers. It's just about making sure that the economy does come back and we're able to open up smoothly as possible. Yeah, I think, you know, for producers generally, uh, boy, on our livestock side, uh, the processing industry, the, the pinch points are seeing that, you know, in the beef industry, for instance, uh, with the closure of those processing plants, uh, you know, this is a, this is a, a huge issue. Uh, you know, it's going to be a market access issue and our livestock side that, uh, you know, our domestic industry is, is really being affected and it's, and it's going to really hurt our producers. Uh, we're seeing it already backups, you know, at the, at the farm gate level, it's cost, it's coming directly to producers, those costs. And, and, uh, so it's important that, uh, you know, from a public health issue and so on that, uh, worker safety is paramount. And when we see these plant closures, you know, the more work we can see and, and priority prioritize on, you know, things like testing at these processing plants to ensure they stay open because producers are the first ones to feel a pinch on that. 
And now you've spoken to publicly about uh, looking for some aid from the federal government. Have you seen any aid or what are you guys still looking for if not? Well, I think, you know, immediate aid, uh, you know, we're looking, you know, the emerging issue in livestock, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, this, this is a huge issue, uh, you know, there's going to be a backlog when these plants do get reopened, uh, you know, when are they going to be at hundred percent capacity? You know, we could be talking weeks, if not months before uh, this has worked itself out. And, and uh, so we're seeing, you know, portions of our industry on the livestock side specifically that are really going to feel the, feel the effects of this immediately. And, and, you know, as we speak kind of thing. So I think those, those uh, producers were looking for, uh, you know, help there, you know, working with uh, cattle groups and our producers are, are uh, doing as much as possible to, uh, uh, get through this, but uh, you know, lots of concerns around the processing. It's, it's going to be a, a bigger and bigger issue, and and how we're going to be able to support these processors and ensure that we have some indus industry left when the processing does get up and running. And and really for Canadian food security, we we need to really start to recognize how big of an issue this is. All right, thank you so much for taking the time with me today, Todd. Really appreciate it. This ag report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Center. Depend on them for product, tools, and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Center with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. Today I'm joined here with Jackie Tomer with the Lloyd Minster Exhibition and today we're going to be talking about just how the Lloyd X has been doing since uh, the pandemic has spread. A lot of events take place at the Lloyd X. So tell me Jackie, how has it been or how has Lloyd X been doing since having uh, the pandemic spread uh, across Canada? Well, uh, as a as a whole, we're trying to stay positive. It has not been easy. We're not going to lie. Uh, we are an organization that that thrives on gatherings, on events, having people walk through these doors. We're a community organization uh, that really loves having visitors, and that has really been put to a halt. So, in the spirit of of who we are and our core, we're optimistic, and we come to work every day, and we're happy to be here, and we're hoping, and we're we're still planning and, and doing all we can, but but it's been tough. Now, uh, not too long ago, it was released that the 4-H Expo was going to be postponed till next year. Now, it, it's a big agricultural city here in Lloydminster and in the surrounding area. So what does that kind of mean for the industry and the area uh, to have that postponed? Well, it is a big hit to the 4-H kids. I mean, they work with their projects, whether it's a horse, a steer, a heifer, a rabbit, a guinea pig, um, or whether it's welding, whatever their project is, they work from the fall until expo time until they can showcase that off. So it is a big hit to them. Uh, we, we are going to miss it incredibly here, but we are being optimistic and we are planning some stuff this hopefully the 4-H week that we can do a bit of a virtual 4-H expo. So we're just working on the plans to finalize those and we hope that clubs will take us up on that and let us showcase their projects. Uh, we are also supporting our beef projects in there's lots and lots of kids that have steers for sale. Um, so if you're looking for some beef, uh, get a hold of us and we can help facilitate, uh, help get you in touch with the with the steers that are out there. And uh, every summer, a big staple of Lloyd Minster is Colonial Days and the big fair that is put on on the Lloyd X grounds. Unfortunately, it was announced yesterday that it was going to be put to a halt. Tell me just a little bit about that and the decision that was made uh, on making it, uh, you know, deciding to cancel it. Yeah, so the board met on Tuesday night and then we made the announcement Wednesday. And just in light of everything, um, you know, FAIR is a huge investment in time, in resources, in the community, and in sponsors. And it's just uh, for the health of the community. And economically, it just doesn't make any sense to go forward with FAIR this year. As much as it breaks all of our hearts, uh, we we love putting on the FAIR or we wouldn't do it. So our board came to that decision. Um, you know, it was a tough decision, but but it was easy at the same time. It's just what it has to be for 2020. 
Now, so the Saskatchewan government did announce that Saskatchewan is going to reopen, and it has been announced that Lloydminster will not be joining um, the Saskatchewan due to the outbreak. So what are kind of the Lloyd X's plans moving forward on to starting to reopen and to starting to, I mean, get back to uh, holding events there as well? Well, what we're mo mainly focusing on is talking and communicating with uh, people that have events that are booked here, helping them navigate their path to, to reholding their event. Uh, we'll be fine with our events. We can we can get those rescheduled and, and redone, but we're, we're really reaching out to our community and saying, if you have an event here, make sure you get in touch with us. And uh, we're flexible and we're, we have our calendar open all the time because we're trying to make things work for people, fundraisers, galas, events, weddings, that sort of thing. Um, we're just asking the community to get in touch with us and uh, we're trying to work with everybody to, to make things work once we can reopen again. And that's awesome. And hopefully once you do get to reopen, you'll start to have that nice flow of events because people really do heavily rely on the Lloyd X. And it's great that uh, Lloyd Minster has a place to hold all these special different events. So it was really nice talking to you and hopefully very soon we'll be reopen reopened once again. Thank you, Abby. Thanks. Joining me today is the Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Summer Games Council, Mark Bracken. Mark, thank you for taking this time with me. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be on. Now, Mark, you guys made the decision that the Saskatchewan Summer Games would be pushed into 2021. How did you guys come up with this final decision? Yeah, it was, it was a challenging process, of course. Uh, we have some key partners that are involved in the uh, Saskatchewan Summer Games. The, the three key partners are ourselves, the Saskatchewan Games Council, the City of Lloydminster, and the Lloydminster Host Organizing Committee. Um, in addition to that, we have our provincial sport organizations and our nine districts across the province, all key players in the games. Uh, we met on a regular basis um, with all of those partners and uh, very closely monitored the COVID-19 situation since about the beginning of March. Uh, had good communication with all our partners. Um, we did uh, reach out to the medical professional community and got a professional medical opinion on whether they thought an event of this magnitude should go ahead this summer. And as a result of the, I guess, the opinion from the medical community uh, in constant conversation with the city of Lloydminster and the Lloydminster host and our sports and our districts. Uh, we finally had to come to the conclusion here earlier this week that uh, it was just impossible due to all of the unknowns around the virus and, uh, you know, safety, uh, health and safety of our participants and the community of Lloydminster and all of the volunteers and all of the athletes coming was just uh, at the forefront and, from a risk management perspective, all of the partners were 100% consensus that we just could not go ahead this summer. So we're really pleased that uh, the City of Lloydminster and the Lloydminster Host Society are excited about hosting it next summer. And we're positive that it's going to be bigger and better uh, next summer. Now, with Saskatchewan starting to reopen uh, different businesses and whatnot, uh, did that change your, or almost change your guys' mind at all? Um not really just because of the mass gathering uh, restrictions. So as you know, the Saskatchewan Summer Games are what I refer to as a massive gathering, not just a mass gathering. We're going to have up to a thousand participants in the Athletes Village at one time uh, sharing, sharing accommodations, sharing food services, washrooms, shower facilities. So, you know, an event like that um, is, is huge and when you have that many people confined to the athlete's village, which would have been the high school, uh, the, the risk there for virus spread is just, is, you know, is very high. So, you know, the restriction provincially is still on for mass gatherings. And like I say, when you have at least a thousand participants in the village at one time, uh, we have to be very, very cautious about that. 
Now, Mark, uh, what happens for the people next year who, who might be too old for 2021 but would have been able to participate in 2020? Uh, will they those people still be able to join the games? So it'll be a sport-by-sport sport decision. So uh, with the uh, 15 different sports that are being offered uh, at the Saskatchewan Games, the good news, by the way, is that uh, in the postponement, all 50, 15 of those sports who would have been participating this summer have all 100% committed to be back for next summer, so that's good. Um, yeah, on the age of athlete participants, uh, that's a bit of a tough one. However, um, the technical requirements and the age categories are all established by the provincial sport organizations. So we've already had that conversation with them. Nothing's been finally decided, but it will be a sport. We're, we're thinking it will be a sport-by-sport sport decision. So some sports may um, take into consideration those athletes that would have been eligible this summer and bump up their age category. For team sports, that gets a little bit difficult because then it starts to cross over into two uh, possible categories. So you might have, for example, um, you know, a, a second-year bantam-aged player um, crossing over with a first-year midget-aged player, which really makes it complicated for team sports to pull those athletes together for competition at the Saskatchewan Games. So as soon as we get those updates from the sports, on whether they're going to keep the same age category or whether they're going to allow those athletes that were eligible this year to participate. We'll be posting those technical package updates on our website. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this insight. This is Mark Bracken, Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Summer Games. Thanks a lot. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad.